Hello ladies and gents, boys and girls, it's Mike here at APL. Um, good to see you guys, it's the 12th of May 2021 and I wanted to do a quick follow-up video where we're going to be looking at the Korg Nano Control 2 which I've already done a video on some time ago but it's been sitting in my workflow for quite some time now and um, I've been looking through the comments section on, on my YouTube channel and a lot of people are kind of saying, Mike, you know, you're only really using these three here which have been assigned to volume, modulation and expression for yonks. And these guys weren't really being used, neither were the rotary knobs. Um, the reason I've taken a photo of this for you guys is that unfortunately my camera setup at the moment is fixed and I can't have something that's moving to show you the faders in action. Um, for any of you guys who know the product already, you will know what it's like. And for those of you who've been looking at the product, I'm sure you have a sense of what the product is like. These faders don't, they're not motorized. All this is all very manual, which works fine for me. I tend to get the patch uh, configured so to speak before I record so I've moved as you can probably tell towards this very kind of like outboardy controlly world in Pro Tools um, I'm trying to get away from the mouse which to me just kind of kind of kills your creativity so the iPad's very much controlling Pro Tools the TC unit's very much controlling my kind of go-to reverb now um, and the Korg Nano Control has sat in my studio since around 2017 so from looking through some of the comments you guys have left me you know, you're like, well, how else can this product be used? You know, is there anything now better on the market? Do you still use the product? The answer to that is yes. And I wanted to kind of this video to kind of be a follow up around that so you can see how I'm now using it. So I hope that image is useful in terms of how my desk is configured. This is what I see when I'm sitting here. I've got my Korg unit here, my reverb here, my iPad here. So enough of that image. Um, so we have a standard Pro Tools session loaded here. Now, what I'll do is I will go through and show you shortly the Korg editor. So I'll show you how I've configured my unit for my workflow. Um, and I'll show you a list of where to get the MIDI CCs from, which is a simple Google search, but who the hell wants to do that when you can put a link in the bottom of a YouTube video. I would use the opportunity to say anyone who's not subscribed to this channel, about 75% of my traffic are from people who are not subscribed. Please do subscribe to the channel, guys. And if you find this video useful, give it a share. It helps the channel grow and all that good stuff I'm sure you have heard a thousand times before. So for the purpose of this demonstration, I'm going to bring in... Um, contact, I will say that contact is loaded within Vienna Ensemble Pro. I kind of have a whole um, section set up within my VE Pro setup now. I did move away from VE Pro for a while as I'm now on a single um, system, but I'm back and I'm loving it in the one box. But that is kind of subject for a different video. So straight away, um, if I just play, say, a chord here, it's quite quiet, right? Now I have all the mics loaded, but I can actually control the close mics, the tree mics, the surround mics, and the overhead mics. I can hopefully hear that changing, especially if I do some stuff, more radical stuff like this. So you could be working out how you want. dynamics say so I'll do that as well expression so yeah um volume I don't really touch but it's a configurable option that I have I tend to leave that around at 0 dB but it changes occasionally your dynamics and your expression, so your modulation and your expression is used a lot. And I love the fact that I can come in now and actually configure a sound for myself. It is incredibly useful. Um, so yeah, those, what I love about it is I can literally load up any patch. So I can come to the iPad and I can say, Right, I would like to move to a slightly different sound, so I want to go Consoldino. So now we've got a Consoldino patch loaded up, which is probably quite far down this list. It's here. So straight away, this patch is pretty quiet. What's going on? There's hardly any volume. Well, that's because the volume is right down. The dynamics is down, the expression is down.
country. Yeah, so quite right now I've got my mouse right on top of my damn keyboard, which is irritating because I can't not get into my higher notes. I'm not splitting those chords perhaps how I would want to. <laughs> But it gives me that option, right, to just jump straight in, you know, regardless of the demonstration. I can control all my microphones. I can control all my dynamics. I can control my expression, my volume, and I can even pan. Straight from right in front of me. This is pretty powerful stuff, in my opinion. It means that I can load a patch, you know, Besides me moving the mouse to show you different areas, to scroll back up here, I can literally move patches to anything I want from the iPad and then straight away from loading up the, so say if I want pizzicatos. A little quiet, right? So. It's cool. I like it. We like it indeed. So to get into this in terms of how we can figure this, well, we use this built-in Korg Nano Control Editor, or the Korg Control Editor, as it's called um, on the screen. There was a period of time where this bad boy was unavailable um, on the Mac, which really irritated me because it meant the Korg was out of my workflow. I'm behind on Catalina. Um, I've not updated to Big Sur because everything is working really well, um, including the Korg Nano Control Editor. So like I said, I will link this down below, but this page is really useful from pa um, presetpatch.com. Uh, they give you a whole list of MIDI CCs. Um, so straight away, the common ones for any person working in any sort of music um, production at all is pretty much going to use 1, 7, and 11, 1 being modulation, 2 be, uh, so sorry, 7 being MIDI volume, and 11 being um, expression. You'll also see that some of these are undefined. So there's no sort of uh, MIDI function assigned to any of these keys whatsoever, any of these MIDI CCs. For anyone who doesn't know what a MIDI CC is, it essentially sends MIDI performance data with um, uh, values of 0 to 127 to a compressor, or sorry, not a compressor, but a, um, a synthesizer outboard or to a software plugin, a virtual instrument, etc., etc. et, cetera, et cetera. Um, So that's how we're managing to control all these elements of contact. Now, if we look at the con at the Korg control editor, you will see that 22 through 25, those are the boys that are assigned to change the um, tree placements in here. So if I move this one right on the far right hand side, I'm probably on a I'm on a pizzicato patch, aren't I? Let's just move back to the ensemble so you can see this moving. Right. So the one on the far far right of the uh, the control, these are doing my surround and overhead mics. Then we've got tree mics and then we've got close mics. So if I take you back to the editor, the close mics are assigned to 22, tree mics 23, and then surrounds 24 and 25. Um, seven is your volume, one is your expression, uh, your modulation, 11 is your expression, 64 is for sustain. So in Logic, this is a, a, a slightly irritating for us Pro Tools users. In Logic, if you just held a note, like, which I can demo here if I were to D, and I bring up the sustain, and I let go of the D. It just plays, which is awesome if you then want to start adding different notes on top from a different sampling instrument. Um, so if I press F, or D minor chord playing, if I bring that down, it will stop playing. So the good thing in Logic is, is that if you did that, you could then move to a different instrument and start playing it on top of your pedal note, so to speak. So you could lay out, if you're doing a horror score or whatever else, or you know you wanted just a, a pedal note you know, to, to work with as like inspiration, you could do that. Pro Tools is a bit of a pain in the arse in that it requires you to record even just the tiniest bit of a bar of the note with the sustain right up. And then you've got to play back the session um, with your other instrument record enabled to play on top of it. So it's a slight irritating thing. But nevertheless, I do still do it on occasion. If I'm trying to look for some inspiration, I will just quickly record a note in 
as a pedal, turn a sustain up in record mode, and then just play back on a different channel. Um, yeah, it just seems to be a quick way of doing something for me, and um, it's just a hangover from Logic, I suppose. So I do use that. Um, CC10, which again, we can revert back to here. CC10 will tell you that it is pan and position. So that is reflected, this guy here, your left and your right, just from turning that straight in front of you. I would say as well that you guys may have noticed here that I've got these two assigned to 17 and 18. 17 and 18 work on XY pads, um, or at least they're working in the XY pads I'm currently using, which is part of Native Instruments Thrill. And uh, Thrill was is amazing, but it was irritating me. Really, it's like an atmospheric uh, generator, if you like. So they've taken a bunch of orchestral... Uh, vocal and kind of sound design elements if you like and thrown them into this pack and you can start to merge between the different sounds giving you different soundscapes which is really useful if you're creating like a horror type scene um, in a film and you want just a good starting point or you're pressed for time on a pitch um, or pressed for time on a scene so I was loving this uh, um, the, you know the ability to use NI Thrill for that capacity and for those scenes but it was irritating me that I was going back to the mouse to draw in you know, MIDI CC 17 and 18 um, into um, Thrill to get the desired effect. I wanted to be able to move a fader or move a knob and just focus deadly on the scene, recording my MIDI data in. I wanted it to be more of a performance and uh, hence why I've managed to now get that up and running um, in here. I may do a demonstration on that if there's any call for it. Um, so yeah, 10 pan, 17 and 18 for, um, I'm using for... Um, mainly for thrill. You'll notice here that I've got my sort of uh, 22 to 25. That's because I was playing around with using the rotaries as opposed to the faders to control the microphones. Um, I find it better on the faders and these are probably gonna get assigned elsewhere. I'm not using any of the transport controls because they do not work in Pro Tools. That is Pro Tools specific because they did work in Logic. Um, and at the moment, I'm not really using any of the buttons in the middle because I just don't feel the need to. Really, this device for me is a control unit for my um, for my door, um, and uh, well, for the more more so to speak for the instruments which are loaded into my door. Um, I've seen people using this on out, outboard synthesizers. If you map it correctly in the audio MIDI window on the Mac, I've seen people using this to control all sorts of data. And I may well do another video, guys, in the future, if I just bring you back to the screen. Vienna Ensemble have brought in um, an entire automation section within their new Vienna Ensemble 7 uh, software. I haven't been using it too much in this session, um, but in a trial session that I have outside of my film score template, I have been trialing it. I may well, it's working very well, by the way, with any kind of um, uh, MIDI controller so far that I've used and tested. So I may do a video on that in the future. Um, if you wanted me to do that, just do a comment for me so I know that that's of something of interest. Um, I hope this video has been useful for you guys. I will be doing follow-up videos both on the TC Electronics reverb unit, the iPad, um, and kind of my new set up a lot of changes has happened to the studio during the lockdown so i hope you guys are interested in that and like i say guys please you know um share the video and subscribe to the channel if you have found this video interesting i will link below the midi cc table i'll link as well to where you can download the korg um, control software for 30 quid something that i spent in 2017 i believe is still 30 quid I think there's a pro version where you've got some pads and different things on top of it, which I would never use. I'm a keyboard programmer for drums. I think it's a solid bit of kit. Um, and if you don't need the motorized fader options, which some people seem to enjoy, I would say it's pretty much a solid unit to have in your studio. All right, guys, take care. I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.